Hello everyone, welcome back to Maverick Mods. This week, odds and ends, kinda, but after uh, last week finishing up the hood, I figured this week I'd take a look at the front bumper and the rear bumper. Uh, although, you guys saw me a few weeks ago shave the bumper bolts on the rear bumper, now it's time to actually prep the bumper itself for uh, paint, sort of. On the front bumper, I had to take kind of a a look at the front bumper, I hadn't really looked at it that close up until this point. I kind of did, but I kind of didn't. So let's take a look at what it's going to take to get the front bumper back into shape and get it ready to mount on the car. Grab your popcorn. Let's dig in. Let's take a look at the front bumper here or the nose piece, whatever you want to call it. This thing is known as an Endura bumper. This is basically a stamped steel frame that has a rubber coating bonded to it so inside of this is the actual bumper there's nothing else so inside of this thing basically is a steel frame that's what all my brackets are bolted to there and it's just coated i've got a lot of it sanded off i've still got a little bit yet to go it's actually in pretty good shape a lot of these see a lot of abuse I mean, it looks like there may be a little bit of spider cracking in here, but so far not too bad. Uh, a lot of times what happens is the metal bumper underneath will start rusting and it'll basically separate the, the uh, uh, urethane. This is basically just urethane rubber. Uh, it's kind of the first attempt at actual plastic bumpers. So let's take a look. See, there's a big glaring problem with this and you guys will see it here in just a minute. So... I'm pretty close. I've got a little fender adjustment to do here, I think. But once I get the valence on down here, we'll know better. But I'm looking pretty good here. If anything, I might be able to come out just a little bit more. Let's look at the other side. Contour doesn't quite match here. I mean, the factory would have called this good a long time ago, but I don't. And I may be just a smidge high on this side. But I wouldn't really know that until I got the other side done. And... Well, let's look at the other side. So, if you guys will remember, I'm basically up against the fender on that side. So, I'm fitting really well over there. But here, this is a little bit of a problem. So, how did that happen? Well, I knew about this uh, quite a while back when I first started fitting all the pieces together. And I thought maybe, well, you know, maybe the whole bumper's got a little bit of a twist to it. And uh, I just kind of left it there for now and figured I'd deal with it later. And, well, it's later now. So I really wasn't able to tell just exactly where the problem was until I got the hood fit. I'm pretty consistent. All along here, I'm consistent all along here. About the same gap. It's got a little variation, but it's basically there until I get to right here. And once it gets to right here, that's where it starts widening, right there, and it just comes all the way out. So how did that happen? Well, I have an idea. A couple of episodes ago, you guys saw me fix this portion of the fender where somebody had drilled a bunch of holes and pulled out the fender. So here's my guess. Somebody was backing out of their driveway, looking over their shoulder, had the wheel cranked to the right, and as they came around, they sideswiped something that hit from this direction, hit here, caught on the corner of the bumper, and just pulled it out. Obviously, this needs to be repaired. I have a plan. Plan A for repairing this bumper corner. We're gonna try it the easy way. If this doesn't work, then we'll go to plan B. I'm not gonna divulge plan B yet. But what I've done is loosen the fender up. It's still attached in the back, so hopefully I didn't lose my complete alignment. But fender's pulled out enough that we're gonna try and just lever the corner back in place. And we've got enough of a gap here that we will have to go a little bit past it and let it spring back until hopefully it's in the right place. But
but the fender should be close enough to its natural place that we can take our board loose here, put the fender back in place and check it once in a while. Currently holding on to a uh, big piece of steel that's about seven feet long. You ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again. Stop. Let's check. Okay. So what I did, what we did in uh, literally 10 seconds worth of work is we took about half of this gap out. I'm going to try it one more time, see if we can get it all out. All right, all right, here we go. Good. Stop. One, you can go one more. Uh, all right. Okay. Before we go crazy, how am I doing? Am I going to hit? No, 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 okay. It didn't hurt the gap. Nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. And this, uh, and the fender does have to go back a little bit. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, one more All shot. Right, one more shot. Ready? Now this is going to be a push. Up. Okay. Okay. Right there. Yep. Right One there. more time. One more. Good. Okay. We're not going to get any closer than that. I don't believe so. We've got to take good enough at some point. Yep. It'll never be. Yeah. Exactly. Easy. How we do it gap wise, okay? Damn, dude. <laughs> we done it. All right, let's take a look, see. So let's take a look at the passenger side, which was good to begin with. And it's good, it's right there. And I've still got a little bit of adjustment left, which I can play with on the bumper bracket itself, but we got this back as close as we're going to get it. All right, I'm happy with that, and I don't have to do plan B, and plan B was going to be a lot harder than this. So, I think we can call this a success. I got the fender reattached, readjusted, bumper readjusted. Our fix worked. I've got just a smidge of a gap here. I really don't, I don't care about taking it any closer. A little bit of filler will fill that. Uh, I think that's about as far as we, uh, it's as far as I was comfortable taking it. Another thing I did while I was at it, the, uh, let me move this out a little bit. The nose piece itself was sagging a little bit at the front, which is pretty common with these things. People lean on the front here. They There's nothing supporting this underneath. Uh, and people will lean on these. They'll lay on them. Somebody sits on it. It was just, uh, you know, flexed down a little bit. Took the port of power. Just went underneath, up to the top. Pushed it back. Hit it with a few spots just to take the stress out of the metal. Got it back to where it needs to be. And it's pretty much about as good as it's going to get. I'm going to use... Maybe a spot or two, just a just a hint of filler, just to get a perfect hood to uh, uh, nose piece gap here. Otherwise, overall, plan A worked, which is good because plan B was going to be really, really involved and probably would have taken most of a day to get done. That worked. I'm really pleased with that. Continuing on with bumper repair. So previously, we 
move the corner back into position and raise the kind of the center of the bumper here to match the uh, height of the hood as well. After that, I had to get the paint off in order to see what I'm looking at underneath. And I'm, it's basically all the paint's off. And it looks to me like this has been through at least one stage of kind of bumper touch-up repair, if you want to call it that. Most of this was under the factory paint. So this may very well have been, I don't know if this was factory filler or not. This has got filler in it here, this little white spot right here. And it's already got it. It's a little bit right down here. The rest of it, bottom, looks good. There's a little kind of a ding there. There's some spider cracks here. We're going to come back to those in just a minute. There's a little bit uneven and rough right down here on the nose. It looks like it's had some filler right here already. Same thing there. Uh, disregard all of this. That's uh, me and the soda blaster. Uh, some filler down here. It's a little uneven. And like I said, fixing just a little notch right there. Otherwise, one of the big issues with these Endura bumpers is if the metal frame underneath rusts and then it separates uh, the bond between the rubber and the, and the metal. Nowhere on this bumper is that a problem. The only issue to contend with which I think has already been done, is it's showing some spider cracks right up in here, but I can't catch a fingernail on any of them. It looks like they have been filled. And if not, when I push on it, I don't see them separating. My other issue up here, same thing up here, there's a little bit right here. These look awfully like they have been filled because I can't catch a fingernail on any of them. Otherwise, I'd have to grind them out and fix them. Nope, not even there. So, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna declare this bumper initially ready for epoxy primer. Now, the nice thing about the epoxy primer is it's got some flex to it. It is flexible and it works as a good uh, base for uh, the flexible filler that goes on top of it. If I had to grind and gouge anything out, then it'd be flexible filler, then epoxy primer, and then final filler. But in this case, I can just do a, uh, epoxy prime the whole thing, and then it basically is fix a few spots here and there. I think there's, like I said, I've got to do a little work here. I'll have to contour the edges after I get it put back on during final assembly before final paint. And same thing, it's, they're just little small touch-up spots. Well, you guys have seen me paint, primer, etc., etc. So I spared you that. We're just putting the bumper back on after getting some epoxy primer on it. So they get this tight, we'll take a look. So just like when it didn't have any primer on it before, there's a few spots. There's one a little bit right here. My contours are going to need a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of body filler. That spot came out really well. Same thing over here. Filler will fix all of that. So basically what we've got here is we've got a perfectly serviceable front bumper that doesn't require anything other than just some basic body filler or some flexible body filler in this case just to make it look pretty good. Can you paint a chrome bumper? The answer is yes. The next question is Will it last? And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. And the answer is, if you just paint a chrome bumper, you just hit it with a little sandpaper, a little scotch bright to try and scuff things up, then the paint is not going to last. You can make the paint last if you get really, really aggressive with prepping the chrome surface. 
The only true way to make sure paint is going to last on a bumper is if you have a bumper that's not chromed. Uh, some pickup trucks, yeah, they come with uh, painted bumpers. Most cars that have bumpers, the bumpers are going to be chrome. And aside from sending it someplace to have the chrome stripped off, which needs to be physically and chemically stripped off, there's no way to get the chrome off otherwise. Sandblasting won't remove it. It's just not aggressive enough. That chrome is, it's, it's on there. So, how do I make this work? Well, you have to remember, chrome is extremely, it's a very, very hard metal. And paint needs... Uh, it needs a bite. It needs a, a, a rough surface to really get a good bite on. So we need to rough the chrome up. And what I've been doing here, I actually ran this bumper through the sandblaster, and as you can tell, it didn't really... I mean, anywhere where you see shiny is not going to... The paint's not going to stick to that. So that didn't work. However, I'm using a 24-grit grinding disc which will rough the surface up enough and give the paint enough tooth to actually stick and last. So let me get the rest of this bumper done. It looks, well, it looks really rough, and it is, and there's a reason for that. This is in no way, shape, or form going to be one coat of primer and paint ready. It just isn't going to happen that way. The next step from here is going to be two good coats of a good epoxy primer. That's a direct-to-metal epoxy primer. That's going to become your base to start working with. Is it going to look nice and smooth and, and ready? Not nah, in your life. But it'll give you that good base to start with that then you can start working the bumper itself and get it ready for paint. But you've got to have that, that initial epoxy primer coat that's going to bite into the metal. And then you can lay primer, urethane primers, anything you want on top of that to smooth it out and get it ready for paint. After two coats of epoxy primer, the rear bumper is ready to start body working. Uh, I've got to fix just a few spots here where I shave the bumper bolts. Other than that, it's in pretty good shape. Just will take some smoothing. Disregard that. That came from the stand. So, got a little spot right there got to fix. Anyway. Bumper is ready for body working, and I uh, can put final color on it after that's done. Well, that's going to do it for this week, guys. Got the front bumper mounted. Looks good. Primered. Again, looks good. Needs a little extra work, but that's going to be for uh, uh, final body work before painting. Same thing on the rear bumper. So, slowly getting this car finished in the mock-up phase. I'm really close to... Uh, getting the car to the point where it's time to take it all apart again and prep it and get it ready for paint. That'll be coming over the next couple of weeks. Certainly appreciate everybody watching. Big thanks to all you guys. If you like this video, think about subscribing. Maybe share it. Maybe get a notification. Maybe, what else did I leave out? Oh, uh, thumbs up if you like it. Everybody, see you next week. Have a great day.